A very good morning once again from the sports desk. It's make or break for Banyana Banyana. It's make or break for this entire country, in fact. Desiree Ellis' charges gearing up for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations final. They are taking on the hosts in Rabat tomorrow night. South Africa defeating Zambia in the semifinals to book their place in this showdown. Coach Ellis' charges will be seeking to break that finals curse, get the monkey off the back and clinch their very first women's AFCON after five failed attempts. To speak more on this, we're joined by ENCA's sports reporter, Tunim Timkul, in studio to just take us back to where it all started, how it all started and how we find ourselves here. So, Tony, good morning to you. It started off strongly, yeah. as it did four years ago, when we thought we were good enough to win the title it started off with a victory over the record holders, Nigeria. Just take us through how Banyana and Coach Desiree find themselves here today. Yeah, Morena, you're right to throw back to that 2018 tournament, you know, where they started off well. They were again drawn against Nigeria in that opener, and they did what they needed to do quite convincingly against Nigeria in 2018. And we saw it again uh, two weeks ago where they were a very controlled side playing against Nigeria, winning that match 2-1. Um, after that, you know, against Burundi 3-1, they were always going to beat Burundi. But I think the way that it happened, it wasn't as simple as we thought it would be. Burundi's defense and their goalkeeper actually um, had to kind of, um, they, there was a lot of work that they had to put in. And their goalkeeper actually should have been, um, I think, nominated for the um, player of the match for that match. But um, she wasn't, you know, and they had so many chances, Banyana did, and it just didn't work out. But they did win at the end of that. Um, and then against Botswana, and Botswana's been a bit of a troublesome team mm. for South Africa before uh, they knocked them out of qualification for last year's Tokyo Olympic Games. Mm. They did beat them in Kosafa after that, but you know, it's always just been a bit of a tricky encounter. And then Tunisia in that quarterfinal, where I think Tunisia had a fair penalty call that didn't go South Africa's mm. way, but there's a whole other conversation to be had about the officiating at this tournament, you know, and then again, we had some officiating drama in the semi final, um, you know, with that Linda Mutalo penalty. Yeah. So it's been. Um, you know, from the opening match against Nigeria, that was a strong performance. But after that, it's been a little bit um, not as convincing. And I think that they did get the strong start they needed. And I think they've just been carried by momentum to get to this point. So tomorrow is going to be uh, a different kettle of fish, I think, just to see if they can make it. Sloni, is it a matter of intimidation? Is, is Banyana, are Banyana Banyana at that point now? in their pedigree where when they step onto the field with any other team, the mm. team first looks at, oh, it's Banyana Banyana who are able to beat the record holders on this continent. We are to fear them, only yeah. to realize that they too are struggling with that big match temperament from time to time and them mm. themselves don't know how to rise to the occasion. Mm. Is that been the issue for them in these games after the Nigeria match? Yeah, I think so much focus goes into that Nigeria fixture mm. and the fact that it was the opening fixture as well. You know, there's all this kind of focus on this match um, and then there's still the rest of the tournament, yeah. you know, and what are you going to do for the, for the rest of the tournament? And I think they've clocked Nigeria, um, but everyone else is still, it's still open game for them, you know, and I think some of those matches were a little bit lucky, um, but I also do think that they are at the point where, in a way, Nigeria sort of is, where they are the favorites by miles, you mm. know, and I think that pressure kind of is starting to kind of tell that they are now the favorites. They are the ones that need to win this match. Mm. Um, and if they don't win, then it's a big upset. You know, they're playing against tournament debutants, Botswana, um, Burundi, that sort mm. of thing, and teams that haven't made it out of the, um, into the knockout stages, for example, with Zambia, you know, so yeah. they are definitely the ones to, to beat. And maybe that is kind of starting to factor into things. Speak to us about the anticipation of the final, the entire <laughs> continent i wouldn't even just say south africa but this whole continent is excited about what's to happen tomorrow because tomorrow there will be a country that is crowned women's africa cup of nations champions for the very first time right there's no nigeria you know to hold south <laughs> africa back there's no equatorial guinea to yes. hold south africa back i remember the equatorial guinea days and how heartbreaking it was for them just to lose in nigeria as well so it will be history in theory it should be um banyana you know they ranked third morocco's ranked eighth um and you know, there's the team that South Africa is now is a different team to what they were even four years ago. Mm. You know, I mean, 2018, they had their best chance to win it. But this is even an even better chance because so many of uh, Desiree Ellis' starting 11, for example, they play um, abroad. Mm. And they've talked up this fact that they are now international best players. Mm. And so many of them are. And, th and that's given them a lot of confidence and a lot more confidence than what was before. But before we continue, I think there are some fans who have had their say as well. Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah.
do good and I think they're gonna win. And it's gonna be I think it's gonna be two nil. <laughs> it's a win. Yeah, because in the S bar we near Nigeria. So I think this thing's gonna go smoothly. Yes, well I have been looking at the games that they have been playing and I'm much impressed about the way they've been playing and yeah, I'm so happy to see such games and to expect I was expecting such from the Bafana Bafana but the Bafana Bafana is not giving me what we want and the ladies are doing their best. I am on top of the world, you know. I can't wait for the match and I know that we we are going to have good results. We are going to win. And I can't I wish I was there. <laughs> I'm so happy for them. I'm so, I am so happy. You know, uh Banyana Banyana they make us proud. Yes. And then they 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 uh, have a chance to fly to Morocco to play against uh, Moroccans and right now I say viva banyana banyana viva I say we're waiting bring it home bring it home we love you and we support you <laughs> all right Tony before we bow I'll just remind our viewers how much is at stake here for banyana banyana both from CAF and from Safa I'll tell you the CAF um, the Safa one that they're dangling this carrot um, of 9.2 million rand 400,000 rand uh, for each player again I think a separate conversation needs to have about why that carrot needs to be dangled in their faces but so far they have already won I think it is 40,000 or 55,000 actually for being semi, uh, for being finalists so they really have that secured and if they do win and beat Morocco tomorrow then each of them will walk away with 400,000 rand so 2.4 million dollars is what uh, Dr. Patrice Mutsepe, the CAF president, is promising the winners of the CAF Champions League. Of course, hiking that up by 150% from the previous uh, $900,000, 900, I think it was, the previous prize money. So there is a lot at stake here for whoever is going to be winning this Women's Africa Cup of Nations. For Banyana Banyana, as we've mentioned with Sloni, of course, that there is the big match temperament aspect of this final. Can they rise to the occasion? They're going to have to do it in Morocco's backyard, of course. And we did see with the CAF Champions League where Al Ahli failed to beat Widat Casablanca. So that atmosphere, they're going to have to shut themselves out of and focus on the goal at hand, and that is to bring that trophy back home. So the, we build up, the build up to that uh, final tomorrow continues here on ENCA right into tomorrow night. So you definitely do not want to be missing it. But that is where we leave it from the sports desk with our reporter, Tonim Tim Kulu. Still to come.